Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Rampant Design Tools tutorial. And this lesson for me is one of my favorites, because one of my favorite product lines from Rampant Design Tools is anything that has to do with lights. The light effects, the light sweeps, all those type of elements are ones that I really like. I'm sort of like a lighting geek, if you want to call me that. I really like adding those elements in my productions, because I think they just really take everything to the next level. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to use Final Cut Pro 10, and we're going to cut together a pretty simple, straightforward sequence, but we're going to take that sequence to the next level using some of the lighting elements from Rampant Design Tools. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Final Cut Pro 10 and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Final Cut Pro 10 and the first thing we need to do is to create a new sequence here and we're just going to call this, why don't I just call it Surfing the Lights. And you're going to know what I mean by that in just a second. And what we're going to do is we'll leave everything else the same. We can leave the default event to be style mats. It doesn't even really matter for the purposes of what we're doing. We're going to get uh, get in and create new events in just a second. We'll leave the starting time code as zero, and the video and audio properties can be based on the first clips we drop into our timeline. I'm simply going to say OK. And what we need to do now is to import some elements. So I'm going to hit Command and I here. And right now I actually happen to be in Rampant's Light Effects. What I'm going to do is just grab everything that's in here. I'm not going to be particular. And I'm simply going to say Import All. I'm going to be prompted as to where do I want to put these elements. We'll just create a new event. And we'll call this Event Light FX. We'll say Import. We're going to import again, Command and I. We're just gonna step up to the Elements folder and we're going to bring in some soft light elements. I'm gonna select them all. Again, not gonna be picky about what we bring in. Of course, we'll call this event Soft Light. Now, this is actually what's very cool about working in Final Cut Pro 10 and using Rampant Design Tools products is that we can actually bring in and have events for each one of the different product lines just like such. Remember, these are just sitting in a folder on my hard drive ready to essentially be previewed at any time. What I can do is just simply navigate over any one of these elements and I can just skim through and see exactly what they do. I don't need to open QuickTime, I don't need to open VLC, I can do everything right from within Final Cut Pro 10. This is a huge workflow benefit, especially like I said, working with Rampant Design Tools QuickTime based products, because like I said, take a look at this. It doesn't get any easier than saying to a client, well, is this the type of thing you're looking for? Well, maybe it's this right here. Very quick and very simple. Okay, now I do need to bring in some footage. So again, Command and I to import some footage. And we're just going to come right back up to the Mac drive here. I'm going to come into footage and I'm going to bring in some surfing. You remember I said that we we're surfing the lights here. So what I'm going to do is bring everything in except the image sequence. We'll say import selected. And we're going to stick them into a new event called, appropriately enough, surfing. We'll say import. There we go. And let's create a new sequence. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with this shot of our surfer girl here riding out to catch the wave. So I'm just going to mark an endpoint. We'll take her to about there till she crashes through the wave. And we'll take that, drag it down into a new magnetic timeline. It doesn't even really matter which shots we go to next here. We got some waves. You know what? I think maybe what we'll do here is we'll actually start out with the waves. Sort of start at about there. Have the crash. And then we'll sort of transition from one to the other. So we'll just bump down the shot of our surfer girl here. No problem. And let's grab some surf in here. Now I know this dude here, he totally wipes out. So we'll get to his wipe out here, right about there. We'll sort of have him cut down the wave just like that. Put him in next. Go to our surfer girl that had surfed her way out there. She has a little bit of a crash there. That's okay. We'll take her, drop her in. And last but certainly not least, we got our surfer dude surfing back the other way here. Very cool. Okay, so here's our very basic timeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to start adding in some Rampant Design Tools elements. And what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to come to Light Effects. Now, Light Effects, I love this product line. It's just some very random, very cool lighting looks. And what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to start with this one. Actually, no, do you know what? I like the one that has purple in it. I think the purple of this element and the blue of the water just goes so well together. So I'm simply going to select this entire element. We're going to drag it down. We're going to drop it down onto the second layer here. Now what's going to happen at the end is we're going to need to fade this out, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, with the element selected, I'm going to come over to the inspector right here. 
we're going to come all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to change my blend mode from normal to add. As soon as I do, you're going to see now that this element is going to actually blend in perfectly with our surfing. Now this is where we'd have some sort of dramatic music happening. And I'm liking that element just like that. And what we're going to do at this point right here is we're going to transition into this element. But what I want to do is I just want to add in a couple more things onto this shot right here. Because like I said, we're going to have some dramatic music here. So let's come into our soft lights here. And let's just find one that's not too overpowering. Even just something like that where it's at the edge of the frame. These are my favorite type of elements, the ones that are the most subtle. So what we'll do is we'll just come back again. I'm going to select the element. We're going to come all the way down to the bottom. Again, we're simply going to choose Add. And you'll see now that if I come back and I simply hit Play, we get these elements overlapping each other. It's very subtle. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple more in here. Let's just find the ones. Even stuff like that is very nice. Let's just take that. We're going to add that. And we're going to add a few of them in here back to back. And since we're sticking with this purple theme for the first one, Actually, even that's not too bad. Let's bring this one down here. Let's make sure we actually select the entire element here before we bring it down. There we go. Very cool. Now, if I come back to the beginning, what we need to do here, first of all, is we need to make sure that we're changing our transfer modes here. Let's just come down. Or as they call them here, our blend modes. Obviously referred to as many different things. Again, exactly the same thing. Add is our blend mode of choice. You'll see if I come back to the beginning, I'll simply hit play. We've now got not only our light effects element in there, but our soft light elements as well. Very cool. Now at that point, you can even see that was almost a perfect transition right there. Now I think what I need to do here is I'm just going to zoom in on our timeline. I'm just going to come back a little bit here because that whole full frame blast was a little bit distracting. So I think we're going to get out of it before that, right about there. I'm just going to use the blade tool. Just cut the element right there, take it out. Bringing our other element back a little bit here. I can extend it down, of course. Very, very nice. And with a little bit of dramatic music, this is going to be pretty powerful stuff. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find an element that's going to go full screen. Because that's going to be what we're going to use as our transition. And even this element here is probably going to do the trick for us. Let's just see. Do we get it to go full frame? It's pretty close. Let's even see this one here. This one's a little bit too empowering. So let's find one here. I know this element does it. Now, of course, the only problem we run into here is this element is green, of course. But what we'll do is we'll take this, and I'm going to show you something that we can do with this that's very cool. What we're going to do is we're going to take this element, and we're actually going to back it up here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just bring it down like such. We can even pin it right about there. I don't want too much of it in the shot. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to come right down to the bottom here. We're going to switch our blend mode to be Add. Now you'll see as soon as we get there, it's going to go full frame just like such. I don't even mind if it cuts in because that actually was a very good transition right there. Perfect. And you'll see that what we can even do with this is once we get it to about here, all I have to do is simply select the layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come right back down here to Opacity. I'm going to add a keyframe right there at 100. Come right down to the end here, add another keyframe, and we'll just fade this element right out. Just like such. Very cool. But what we also want to make sure of is we want to keep this light effects element going here because this light effects is working really well for us. And I like this one here too. Now one thing I wanted to point out that's important, remember I was sort of going with that blue look. But right now we don't have a blue look. We kind of have a green look. We kind of have a yellow look. What we can also do here that's very important to keep in mind is we can get in and make some color adjustments to these elements. Now what I'm going to do for a second here is I'm just going to turn skim off. And before we move on, what I also want to do here is I'm just going to come back to my transition here. We're going to do exactly what we did before. I'm going to come down to my opacity. We'll add a keyframe there. Our value at that point at the edit will be at 100. But what we're going to do is we're going to have it start at nothing. So what it's going to do, of course, is it's going to fade in to the transition point. Actually, our transition point is right there. So let's bring our element back just a little bit here, just like that. And basically, it's going to fade in and boom. Transition, just like that. Very cool. 
Now, of course, here's our element that we want to get in and we want to do some color correction to because I want to stick with that whole sort of bluish purplish theme. No problem. What I can do is with the element selected, heading right back up to the inspector, what we're going to do is we're going to come into color correction mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to color. We're just going to grab the midtones. I'm just going to drag them way over here to about purple, kind of like that. I'm liking that. If I wanted it to be more blue, I can just kind of bring it back to about there. What I can do now is simply step back. Again, we're going to come right down to the bottom here to compositing. We're simply going to do this again as an additive composite. And you'll see that we now have some blue elements going on here. Very cool. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to switch back to be none for a second here. You'll see there's the blue. Not blue. You'll see originally, if you take a look down here in the timeline, this was sort of an orangey yellow color. Not anymore. Take a look. I'll hit skim here. It's orange all the way through. Guess what? Let's come down here to our timeline. Let's just turn skim off. We're going to come down, switch back to add. Guess what? Not orange anymore. Now it's purple. What's important to keep in mind about this element here is that I could do the exact same thing. What I can do is simply come into correction one. What we're going to do is with colors, I believe this would probably be one of the highlights. There we go. We'll just send this over to be sort of a purpley blue color. Kind of like that. And now sticking with that purple look, there we go. Perfect. And of course, what we want to do is we want to get in here. We want to add some transitions in. But what I also want to do here as well is I want to just make sure we add some more elements in here because I love these light elements. And what's also important to keep in mind, I'm just going to select this entire element, drag it right down here, stick it onto the next video layer. Again, do exactly the same thing that we've been doing. I'm simply going to come back to the inspector. I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to do this as an additive blend mode. And you see now that this looks really cool. And what we want to do is just make sure we add a couple more transitions in here. So let's come back to our soft lights here. And let's just take a look at this element. Now you remember, much like I said before, I don't need to worry about the color or what exactly it's doing in the, in the frame. Even that right there. I think that's going to be our transition point right there. I'm going to take this element, drag it and drop it right down here. Of course, we're going to drag it back just ever so slightly. And of course, with this element, what I'm going to do is we're going to come all the way down to the bottom. Again, we're going to add a keyframe right here. Come all the way back. Add another keyframe. We're going to fade this all the way out. Again, I can do the exact same thing down here. Add another keyframe. Fade it all the way out. So basically, it's kind of fade in and then fade out. But of course, what we want to do is make sure that our blend mode is set to add. Now, this is sort of a pinkish color. Not too big about the pinkish color am I here. Sort of, sort of talked a little bit like Yoda right there. Uh, what I'm going to do here is come back and we're just going to switch this back to be more of a blue color. There we go. You can see that with the fantastic QuickTime based elements here. Now you'll see that we got something going on here because it's not doing exactly what we want it to be. This should be full frame here. Well, guess what? If I want to make sure that this element goes full frame, all I have to do is simply take it. I'm going to copy it. We're going to paste that element down. We're going to take it, drag it right back up to the top here, put it right on top. We're basically going to double this element up here, just like such. And you can see we're almost at the point now where this element is going to be full. Again, exactly the same thing. Copy, paste. Just take it right back up to the top here, drop it in. And now we're probably going to go, that was looking perfect. You see, with some doubling up, tripling up of the elements, no problem. And there goes our big wipe out here. What I'm going to do is just zoom back ever so slightly here. And you can see how this is going to go for the rest of the element. Now what I can do with our light effect here is I can simply take it, we're going to copy it, paste it right in here, do it one more time here. There we go, right down to the end. I'm going to do the exact same thing with this element. I'll copy it here. I'll paste it. You can obviously get in, use whatever element you want here. Of course, we'll either blade it or just bring it back just like such. But basically what we've done is we've come in and we've created these fantastic elements here inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to choose a couple more transition elements here. And even this element here, I don't necessarily mind. It's pretty much full frame for most of the time. I'm just going to mark that as my endpoint. We're going to drag it right down here. We're just going to attach it to the edit point right there. And I think I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. This one's pretty much full frame most of the time here. Mark that as my endpoint there. We'll bring this down. We're going to attach it to this edit point right here. 
just give it a little bit more time back here like such. And what I want to do is I just want to come over here. We're just going to give it an additive blend mode here. Do the exact same thing with the next one and we'll take a look to see what they look like. Now they're probably going to do what we wanted them to do. They might just need a little bit of color correction here. That actually outgoing looked very, very nice. And what I think we're going to do here is we're just going to, again, much like we'd done before with the elements selected, we're going to come up here and we're going to come to color correction one. Again, we're going to take our whites and we're going to make them almost a bluish color here. Kind of about in there. I almost want it blown out totally. Now you'll see the only problem with that is that if I undo what I just did, this element actually worked very nicely, just like that. So you know what? Maybe we'll stick with that color. You'll see sometimes color correction is not the best way to do things. Now you'll see that coming in just like that didn't work at all. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a very slow fade into it. What we're going to do is we're going to come right back here. We're going to add a keyframe, of course, for opacity. At 100 right there at the edit point. Again, right here, we're going to add a keyframe. We're going to set that to be zero. And what we have now, very slow fade in to a transition, just like that. And the edit actually worked, even seen it a little bit. Now let's just see what our next transition does right here. We're going to see it cut in right about there. Very cool on the out, not as good on the in. No problem. Let's just bring it right back. Again, exactly the same. Let's come all the way down to the bottom here. We're going to add a keyframe for opacity. We're going to come all the way back. Again, I don't even necessarily think this needs color correction, but we saw how simple it was to add color correction. There it is with a slow fade in to an awesome transition to the last shot. So let's take a look at what this entire edit looks like now. We're going to come right back to the beginning. I'm just going to play it here. And like I said, this is where we'd have some dramatic music playing with the crashing sound of the waves, the very cool lighting effects we have on top. Of course, we're going to transition in to our surfer girl surfing out to catch that first wave, just like such. Then what are we going to do? We're actually going to transition now into the actual surfing. You see, this soft light works perfect as transitions. And the light effects, just having it over top of the footage, just takes it right to the next level. Fantastic transition right there again with that soft light. Let's see it one more time right here. Very cool. So as you can see, soft light, perfect for the transitions, light effects, perfect just to put on top of the footage, just to sort of give it that extra little flare, almost like you actually shot it that way. And what ties all of these together? those transfer modes or blend modes right inside Final Cut Pro 10. Now what's important to keep in mind about this tutorial is that I purposely didn't prep it before I started. I didn't know what shots I was going to use. I didn't know what elements I was going to use. I wanted to sit down and show you that literally in a span of what, 15 minutes, we just essentially cut a minute worth of creative here with some fantastic quick time based elements that take what would be ordinary and make them extraordinary. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can head on over and post them in the Rampant Design Tools forums. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.